Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and of course you know I say it. It is our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited about the series that we have been sharing with you. Decision Makers. We are in a very pivotal time. We are ending, coming to an end for 2022. And many are looking at the decisions that they need to make. Personal, ministry, and business. But we are taking a totally different spin on this. And we're sharing with you some great insight about the power and the authority to make decisions. We're giving tools to our leaders in helping them to succeed in making those decisions. The foundation of making any decision is always going to be how and when we interact with God, how we pray, how we wait for a response, our faith, our obedience, our humility, and our level of maturity. Now we've already shared with you decision making, which was the opening of the series. We also talked about adversity, working through adversity, dealing with the adversary. Today, we're going to talk about delegation. That's right. That is one of the areas of making decisions. And we've been sharing components of this series through Nehemiah. Awesome, awesome series. I'm enjoying it. I hope that you are enjoying it too. And we would love to hear from you. Please email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com with your comments. And if there is anything else that you would like for us to, you know, take a look at as a series from the Word of God and listen, You never know, your topic might hit the airwaves. Once again, our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. So today we're going to take a look over at Nehemiah the third chapter. This right here is very important. Beginning at the first verse, here's a time of delegation. And it is important to, uh, as a leader, to take the time to know the people that are on your team. Get to know them, learn of their weaknesses and their strong areas. Also learn of their interests. If they have an interest in an area, put them in places where they can learn before you release them. Sometimes, especially in ministry, we release people individuals in areas that they do not even have interest neither is it their area of expertise that is not the area that they work in and we fall short we do we fall short and things are not getting done the projects aren't being completed the individuals are frustrated, the morale is down, the the vision leader, the, the, the visionary is frustrated, uh, and, and so it's so important that we pray and we ask God who is supposed to be on that team and their capabilities. The reason why we pray is because we want to be God-led. An individual may say, yes, I know how to do that, and they may not. Or that might not be the place that God has for them to work in. So always, always, always consult God in every area of our lives. Whether it's personal, business, or in ministry. Alright, let's take a look at the Word of God. Nehemiah the third chapter, first verse. Then Elizahib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set it up the doors of it, even unto the tower of Mia. They sanctified it unto the tower of Hananel. So, the priest, 
what they did, they sanctified. That was their area. They were instructed to work according to the areas connected to their ability. And that's what we have to do. Work in areas connected to our ability. We may want to do something, but God, is that where you would have me to work? Is that where is a, is that a place where you want to train me? Do I have the experience? Do I have the not the knowledge? And always, even in the New Testament, Timothy instructs: study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, that you be not ashamed. And so this is why it's good to know where a person has strong points and weaknesses and if it is their area that they should be in. Uh, in, in other terms, you know, stay in your lane, uh, stay in your lane and don't put people in places just to fill a position, just to say you have a body there because it is not a good thing. It is not a pretty picture and you will become frustrated because it's not working the way that it is supposed to work so always stay in tune with God stay in tune with the Holy Spirit and make sure that you are putting individuals in places that God will have them to work and operate in another reason why you pray to make sure that a person is a right fit for your personal life business organizations and ministries is because you want to make sure that you have not placed someone who has a sabotaging spirit to work in your organization. You do not want to give the enemy any place, any access inside of your organization to work. Do not do that. So always consult God to make sure that the right people are in the right place. And then also, you must understand if they are just there for a season. There, are th Some people just come as they are released by God for a portion. L let them do whatever that portion is so that they can go and, and do other works for the Lord. There are individuals uh, I really uh, enjoy and am thankful that I am one that he sends on assignments. And so I might have relationships with several ministries and businesses. I only have a portion to play. I always ask God what part of their vision do I have a portion in? What is it that I'm supposed to share with them? Am I just there as an intercessor? Am I there to release some information? What is my portion? I do not want to overstay. I do not want to overgive. I only want to do what God leads and guides me to do. All right, so let's continue. Verse 2 says, And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded Zachar the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hassaniah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Kaz. And next unto them repaired Mesalem, the son of Barachah, the son of Meshazebel. And next unto them repaired Z Zadok, the son of Benaiah. And next unto them, the Tekoanites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. So, as you can see, didn't I just say that? <laughs> and next unto them, the Tekoanites, Tekoaites, excuse me, repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. And so they didn't have a portion in building. Not everyone was happy that this rebuilding was taking place. So that's why it's important to make sure that you stay in prayer before the Lord at all times. Make sure that you stay in prayer. Verse 6 says, Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoadiah, the son of Passai, and Meshulam, the son of Besoadiah, 
they laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and the locks thereof and the bars thereof and next unto them repaired Melatiah the Gibeonite and Jadon the Mironathite, the men of Gibeon and of Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. And so as you can see, individuals did according to as they were instructed. They were delegated in portions to rebuild and repair. And that is what the third chapter is all about. So I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I'm connected to find out who does what, their capabilities, am I putting tasks on individuals that they cannot handle, it's not their expertise and it's not their interest, and also is that the right person, does God want that person a part of the organization, am I moving uh, and placing them uh, in positions based off my emotional tie to them, uh, or is it am I doing it because they're good friends and their family sometimes we put people in places because of familiarity because we just want them to come along with us that's the emotional side and so we cannot make decisions the power and authority of making decisions has nothing to do with our emotions do not become a emotional decision maker because a lot of times when we make our decisions based off of emotions, we error and we fall into regret. So do not become an emotional decision maker. Do not make decisions based off of your anger. Do not make decisions based off your frustration. Do not make decisions based off of you trying to keep up with others, whether it's personal, ministry, or business. Always consult God. You have been given the spiritual authority and power as a decision maker because you are representing Christ. You are an ambassador of Christ. The vision that you are working in is for the kingdom of heaven it is so that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven and so that is the only reason why we receive spiritual authority to make decisions and i am yes most definitely this teaching is for the body of christ it is for the body of Christ. Remember, just because we see a warm vessel and they are eager to get to work, always consult God about where you place them in the ministry. And let me say this because I've seen this one too many times and it is a place of error. As soon as someone joins an organization ministry business sometimes mainly in ministry as soon as we see them come through our doors three times we want to put them in a place and in a position we don't know anything about them we're not using spiritual discernment we haven't prayed all we know is we want to put them to work they haven't uh, even joined the ministry and we're giving them access to move around in ministry they don't even know anything about the ministry let alone we don't know anything about them we haven't taken the time to ask God we haven't taken the time and we just push people into place and what you find when we do that is they do not stay in that place for long and you will also find some discord and some division sometimes we're putting people in places and they have not been properly trained this is a part of your authority of making decisions spiritual authority and delegation requires that we train people properly before releasing them in position let the people sit down for a moment learn about the ministry you learn about them 
Let them learn about you. Find out more about them. Find out their areas of expertise. Find out their strong areas, their weak areas. Get to know a person. We must learn as a people. Just because the body walks through the door, we must make sure that they are spiritually fit. I'm not saying that everybody, that, that we're looking for perfection. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to make sure that they are the right fit for those positions before we put them in there and we release them. We release them to uh, things that are sacred. And when things go haywire and they go, don't go right, we're sitting and saying, well, what happened? I didn't think they would do that. But guess what? You didn't know them at all. We didn't know them at all. And we have to get, we will give an account of that. Yes, whatever decisions that are made, we will have to give an account. And the account we have to give is if we actually follow what God said. Recently, during Bible study, we did a two-part series, What Did You Do With My Word? Well, this is a, a, a prime example. What did you do with my word? What did you do with the instructions I gave you? Here's something that happens. If you didn't ask him his instructions, you're going to be held accountable. And if you did ask him his instructions and you did not follow those instructions, you will be held accountable as well. And so, that goes back to, what did you do with my word? Did you follow my instructions? Did you even ask what I wanted to do? Did you even ask where this person was a good fit? A lot of times, if we would take the time to pray and wait for God's response when delegating individuals into positions what we will find is God might tell you not right now that they are in a broken place and they need to be healed in some areas before you put them to work mm -hmm. yeah uh, or some areas that uh, we want to place them in they might they might need to be delivered But if we don't consult God, how are we going to know? If we don't ask God what he wants to say or what he wants to do or who he wants to wear. If we don't ask, how are we supposed to know? Remember, if you are the leader, the visionary, you have a grave responsibility and you must be committed to what God has given unto you to do. So the third chapter of Nehemiah really talks about delegation, who was doing what. Now I want to back up because in that second chapter, here's something that I love about Nehemiah and we shared a portion of this already. It says, Nehemiah went to inspect the walls. Uh, verse 9, it says, uh, Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. So he did that. And verse 11 says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night. I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went out, then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. 
Then I went up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I yet told it to the Jews. Nor priests, nor the nobles, for the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. So before he delegated, he took a look around to see what needed to be done. That's another part of decision making as the visionary, as the leader. Until we get an understanding of what needs to be done, we can't delegate. Now that's good. I'm going to tell you what that just got so good to me. Because if we don't understand what is needed, we cannot properly place people in places to get the job done. That's how we misplace people. Because we don't understand what needs to be done. And so we place people in positions and we tell them to figure it out. Or we expect them to know what it, what needs to be done. But as the leader, as the visionary, you're the one who carries the vision. So it is up to you to consult God. We might get ideas in, but you still have to go and pray about it. Okay, that's a good idea. Lord... A committee brought up this suggestion for the organization to do. How would you have us to carry it out? Get some instructions. But we do the actual opposite. You know that? We place people in positions that we ourselves don't know about. Okay? This is a learning curve for all of us. We don't know about the position, but we place people in the position and we have an expectation for them to function. How is that? I'm going to say this. Do not delegate a person to a position that you don't know about or that you don't understand. That's why I love teaching the fivefold ministry gifts. When I started teaching the fivefold ministry gifts, as mentioned in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it prompts me to learn about all of the ministry gifts and, and not to just stay there. The spiritual gifts, learning about the Holy Spirit, learning about this different aspect of each one of those ministry offices how can I properly teach about the ministry the fivefold ministry if I haven't studied each one of those and it's the same thing in organizations we can create a position but how is it that that position is supposed to function do some homework uh, specify how you want that position to operate in your organization don't just create a position and and put someone there and you don't know how you want it to function here's something else that I believe and if you're just tuning in you're tuning in to the balance of life I'm Pastor Angel Ferguson and we are in conclusion of our three-day series of making decisions as we're coming to the close of the year 2022 wanting to share some tools for our leaders that will help us to succeed. Here's something that I firmly believe, and I learned this, and I'm still learning this, but God really began to open it up to me when I opened my bookstore back in 2016. I had to create the different positions that I wanted in the bookstore and then I had to write a description on how I wanted them to function but not only that I had to fulfill each one of those positions by learning how to do it myself and I'm doing that still today 
with radio, with publishing, television, ministry, uh, Hope and Truth magazine, with everything under the umbrella of Angel Ferguson Ministries. It is a learning experience. And so in order to have someone else come in and train them, I must learn each one of these functions that I do and get an understanding of it so that at the appointed time I can train someone else to take one of those positions and so I have to fully understand what it is that I'm doing get a good technique so that I can teach and train properly and that's what it takes in ministry sometimes once again we just want someone in a position we just want a body in a position and we don't know anything about that position all we know is hey this right here needs to be fit be fulfilled and so you do it and we're not giving any proper training we're not following up on any training we're just releasing these people and then we are frustrated when they don't know what to do and it's not working and flowing and whose fault is it I'm going to tell you it is the leaders fault mm -hmm. it is definitely the leaders fault and so I think we should take the time to properly train and to get people in the right positions that's right get people in the right positions that they are capable of but first you study the position you study the position you get an understanding of that position so that it flows properly that's what it's all about that is what it's all about so let's go even further Nehemiah did not share anything until the appointed time and then he delegated the people according to their ability even when it came time to watch as well as pray he delegated in that as well that's right he delegated the appointed time not everybody worked this is good stuff When it came down to protecting, um, he knew who was able to protect. He knew um, who needed to be where. That's proper decision-making power. And I'm going to say this, don't abuse your decision-making power because you have the authority to do so remember we are God's representatives and so we can't abuse that power we can't treat it any kind of way because we have been given that power remember once again we are representing God and how we represent him is so important let us do it in humility let us do it in love and I cannot say this enough as a leader you are forever learning you are forever in the position to learn and and we're supposed to lead to go somewhere not lead just to stand still and so as you are learning and you are growing then ask God who's supposed to be with you along the way teach and train them to be an understudy so that one day they may take the realm but it's all in how you use your spiritual authority to make decisions if we find our place in God seek his face like never before follow his instructions we shall succeed we will have the victory and when the enemy comes in like a flood it is God that will lift up a holy standard by his spirit 
I pray that you've enjoyed this three-day series. Listen, we're looking for more content, and we love to hear from you. Email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Give us your suggestions. We love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.